Within this lesson, we are going to take a look at one of the three basic views that are available within the Concordance 2007 environment. They are the Browse view, the Table view, and the Edit view. Depending on what you are trying to accomplish within Concordance, you will likely find yourself spending most of your time within one of these three views. So let's start by taking a look at the Browse view. The Browse view is the default when launching a Concordance database and it is the view that I have opened on the screen currently. What the Browse view does is essentially allow you to look through all the records within the database one at a time. The data fields within each record are displayed in a vertical format so that you can have a bird's eye view of everything at the same time. As you can see within this Browse view, I have the various data field names on the left followed immediately by their content on the right. So for instance, I have Start Page, end page, author, etc., down to the OCR field which contains all the text of the documents. Notice that some of these fields contain no information, they are just empty fields. Currently the concordance default is to show all fields regardless if there is data within the fields or not. I can change this behavior by going to the tool menu and then deselecting the empties option. This way only the fields containing data will be shown. Personally, I prefer to have the empties shown so that I know I am seeing all possible fields. Otherwise, you might accidentally forget a field simply because it is not displayed since it is empty. And one thing you'll notice as you look further down is that by activating each separate view, whether it's the browse view, the table view, or the edit view, a set of new icons which pertain to the particular screen will appear at the bottom of your navigation bar. So let's begin our look of the Browse view by taking a look at the navigation buttons that are available for this view. Now, before we actually look at each button, one nice thing about Concordance 2007 you'll notice is that if you hover over any of the icons, it'll give you a short description of what the icon is supposed to do, as well as provide you with the shortcut key. This is helpful in that as you become more familiar with the program, you can navigate through its various functions using your keyboard. Personally, I like to use the mouse more, but if you are more nimble with the keyboard, by all means, make use of the shortcut keys whenever they are available. And with that in mind, let's turn our attention back to the buttons at the bottom of the screen. These first four arrow icons in blue are your basic navigation buttons. They allow you to go from record to record, and of course, to jump from first record to last record. It is by using these navigations that a typical reviewer would look through the browse view one record at a time. They are pretty self-explanatory and standard. Right next to the navigation buttons is the Go To button. The Go To button allows you to jump directly to a particular record within the database as long as you know the record number. So, for example, I can jump to the last record of the database by using the last record button on the blue navigation bar or I can also click on this Go To button and enter in the last record number, in this case 25, and I'm automatically brought to the last record in this demo database. Now the question of course becomes, how do I know that this is record number 25 that I want to look at? Well, within the Browse view, and also in the Table view, but we'll look at that later, within this Browse view, at the bottom right hand side of the screen, you'll see the record numbers displayed. The text begins, document 25, bracket 25, of 25. This first number tells you which record I am currently viewing. And the last number is the total number of records in the database. The number in the middle of the bracket has to do with your search order. We will actually take a closer look at this middle number in a later lesson while we're talking about searching. For right now, just be aware that it's part of the whole document number process. And right next to the text information here, there are further smaller notes that accompany each record. Depending on the markings of the record that you're looking at, the DEL or the TAG text may also appear. Basically, the DEL text means that this particular record has been marked for deletion, and the TAG text means the record has been marked with a tag 
We'll take a closer look at these base tags when we can discuss tagging and deletion, but for right now, just keep in mind that there are notations that can help you quickly identify if a record you are looking at currently has a tag, or if that particular record has been marked for deletion. Okay, going back to the bottom left hand side of the screen, let's look at the next buttons. These two buttons next to the Go To button are your search term target buttons. We're going to look closer at searching in a later lesson, but as an example of how these two target buttons function, let me just do a very quick search right now for the word security. I'm going to go up to the top of the quick search bar, type in the word security, and just hit my enter key. You'll notice now the word security has been highlighted for me in the body of the OCR text field. That means these particular records are hits on my keyword search. And using the two target buttons, either the previous hit or the next hit button down on the bottom, I can jump directly to the text with a highlighted term. The goal of the target buttons are basically there to make it easier to jump directly to the search term without having to read every single line of text. As you can see, the previous and next hits works the same as any navigation buttons going back and forth between the search hits. The next icon is the view image button which is basically the heart of a document review in concordance. Clicking on the view image button brings up the corresponding TIFF image. Here you get an actual look at the document reference by the coded fields in the browse view. We can see that the information in the TIFF image was captured and placed in concordance for searching purposes. The date, February 3rd, 1984, is taken and placed into the date field and the recipient, a Mr. W.C. Sandoz, is taken from this TIFF image and placed into the recipient field. And the text of the body of this document is then taken and placed into the OCR field. Generally, depending on the type of documents you are dealing with, the information was probably converted by an e-discovery vendor or if documents were originally in paper format, they were probably manually inputted by a team of coders. Essentially, a team of people quickly skim the documents and type in the relevant fields. The image viewer is what brings up the original scan or converted image during a review of a document. Now, something you may have seen in using concordance is that both windows, the concordant text window and the image viewer window will appear side by side just like I have here on the screen. From this view, I can actually look at the text on the left hand side of the screen and the corresponding image on the right hand side. And as I flip through the concordance text, I get a corresponding image on the right. Just in case you're not familiar with this side by side function, let me run through it briefly. It's actually a Windows function. I open up the two Windows program that I want to have side by side, then right click over the taskbar and select Tile Windows Vertically. The window that has the mouse focus, that is the one that is highlighted in blue, will automatically go to the left and the gray out window will go to the right. You can also tile the windows horizontally if you prefer. Another way of bringing up the Opticon image is to highlight the image key available in the browse view. For instance, in this record, I can go into the field with the OCR text, highlight this image key, and right click and select View Image. The Opticon image now also shows on the right hand side. The difference between using this right click function rather than the image view icon is that the right click function jumps to the actual image page referenced. So in a 10 page document, if I have the image key of all 10 pages listed in the OCR text, I can jump directly to that particular TIFF file rather than starting with page 1. This is one of the reasons why coding and scanning vendors are sometimes asked to include the image key or Bates number within the OCR text when preparing a load for concordance. Okay, we'll look at the in-depth function of the image view later on in a different lesson, but for right now, let's continue our look at the rest of the browse view icons. Next to the image view button is the copy button. The copy button basically allows me to take the text from specific fields and copy it out of concordance and into a text file. Clicking on the copy button brings up this window which lists all the fields in the database. 
I can then highlight the specific fields that I want and choose one of the three options available to the right. If I choose a new file button, I can specify a new text file for this data that I've highlighted. I'm going to put it onto my desktop and title it copybutton.txt and hit save. Now if I then open up the file on my desktop, you see that the text I highlighted in concordance has been copied into the text file. Let's try that again. If I click on the copy button, I am again confronted with a list of fields and the same three choices. This time, I'll select a few more fields and I'm going to click on the append button. This append button allows me to add to an existing text file instead of creating a new one. So instead of saving a new text file, I can choose the one that I just made. So I can select my copybutton.txt file. Now if I go back to my file on my desktop, more fields have been added to this file. What you might notice right away though is that the data simply copies to the very next available line. And without the field names, the data tends to all clutter together and we can't really tell which record begins where. So obviously this is not the best way to go about exporting out massive amounts of data. It really was meant to get out just small pieces of information, which is why the third option within the copy button is likely the one you use most. Let's take one more look at the last option of the copy button. This time I'm going to choose the last option, which is clipboard. Notice that once I have all my fields selected, if I click on this clipboard button, the screen disappears. This is because the information have now been copied to my computer clipboard. And right now I can paste that same field information onto any computer application that I want. So if I open up MS Word, I can simply use paste or control V to paste the copied information into a Word document. The same data can be pasted into email, notepad, and so on. It is a quick way to get the specific field information you want without actually going through a full export of the database. Okay, now this last button on the browse screen's navigation bar is the font button. This button is really more one of aesthetics, and if I click on it, it will simply let me change the fonts of the concordance screen to something else. So I can make all the text bold with the color blue, for example. Personally, I've not seen many users make use of this function, as again, it's really more a font format button and serves no real purpose for review. So there we have an overview of the browse screen and the various navigation buttons that are available. In the coming chapters, we'll look at the two other main views of concordance that you'll probably spend most of your time in, the table view and the edit view.